I've been in a creative rut. But maybe that's not the best exact wording, but I have felt stuck creatively. And there is an elephant in the room there because in February, we lost my dad uh, very suddenly. And it kind of leveled the year, I think, for me. He was a lot of things to a lot of people and I was not ready to talk about him in the past tense yet. So it's been a weird few months. Anyone that's gone through a bereavement like that will tell you that everything just kind of freezes or everything around you continues and you're frozen. And unfreezing is such a weird, weird thing to be aware that's happening to you. Because as a creative, I think you become hyper aware of when you're not creating. Like I work a nine to five in video production. I listen to music, I make stuff here. It's rare that there's ever a time when I'm not like at least thinking about making something. But you go through something as sudden as losing a loved one and uh, you just drop it all, you have to. But it's like you turn that switch off and then after a while you just become increasingly more and more aware of the fact that that switch is off. And I, I wasn't expecting how daunting making things would, would become. And getting back to work, you know, that, that was a way of getting back to making things, but it's different. That's making something for someone else. And I really wanted to just make something for myself. But what is that? What do I make? Like the longer you spend away from a creative output, the weirder it feels to get back into it, the more like rusty you feel, obviously. And it just, the longer that goes on, the more you just get daunted by it all. I think eventually you just have to make something. Grieving for me is really just sort of like waves of weights off. And one of those weights just happens to be like a camera. And after Dad died, we um, ended up going through loads of past family footage as a family, like old videos from trips when we were younger. And um, it's weird, it's like it's surprising to see how much dad was behind the camera like I'd always known he was a tech person I he loves his new iPhones his new iPads and his new cameras I always just thought he was buying new cameras because they were new shiny tech um, and I'd never really thought about the fact that he was probably actually just using them as cameras and he just liked filming things and taking pictures of things and he saw the world through a creative lens that I hadn't really thought about, even though I knew he was using them, if that makes sense. So watching it all back with that kind of realization, it was like, I don't know exactly what was going through dad's head as he was pressing record on a shot of me and my uh, brother and my sister dancing around a drain pipe in Portsmouth, right? But I, it, I was probably thinking, what have I raised? Why are these kids dancing around the dream? But I also feel like he, he must have really loved us to document everything like that. I don't know, watching that just felt this real awareness of how we document things. So, hey, that's what this is, I think. I wanted to document anything. I don't know what this video is going to look like, but at least I know that this was something I made at this point in my life as I was feeling like I've been feeling, right? You must be Igor. Now it's pronounced Igor. They told me it was Igor. And even if this video is absolutely nothing, like truly nothing, it would have done one thing at least, and that is get me south of the river. As a North Londoner, this is unheard of. Walthamstow to Peckham. Just, how do I describe that to a non-Londoner? Have you ever seen Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring? I mean, I joke, but the very last stop on the Northern Line is literally two letters off Mordor. Morden does have the better park, though. I mean, I'm assuming. <laughs> Honestly, though, just like being out with the camera on like a primitive level of just point at thing and press record at thing, 
I can feel myself warming back up, I guess. Although I do have to let you in on a little secret, and that is that this was not shot in one day. Uh, it's been a few months just chipping away at this, whatever this video is. So sorry for deceiving you there, I guess. I don't know. But just like playing around with the camera in little bits and not worrying about what the hell I am shooting or filming or making, I've just felt very aware of the process of warming back up, if that makes sense. Which is, I don't know. I'm absolutely overthinking this but if a few months ago i felt like i was outside of myself then now i do feel like i'm back to myself it's that weird cliche of time healing things but it does it does just happen but i mean i'm not kidding myself i have an amazing support network of friends and family an amazing girlfriend i, I have no doubt in my mind that i wouldn't be back to myself as quickly as i have been without them in my life which is lovely it's nice to have it is but if i want this video to be any kind of reminder for myself in the future at any point down the line i guess it's just that feeling outside of yourself or in a rut or whatever it is it's temporary We watched some of Dad's favourite films a few months back. Young Frankenstein, Monty Python and the Holy Grail, classics. He did have immaculate taste. And it was this really strange experience where we were, as a family, all there except Dad, watching these films that we'd grown up with and that were just so... They're just so Dad, right? He's so much more than Monty Python and Mel Brooks, but at the same time, he also just is exactly Monty Python and Mel Brooks, and it's just him, his silliness and his sense of humour. And it was just strange to watch that without him there. But at the same time, it was kind of nice because it, it was a bit like getting back to being with him because we were with his sense of humour, you know? Gene Wilder at the train station delivering the line Frankenstein. You can almost hear Dad laughing with us while we were watching it. And it really made me think a lot about how we attach certain moments in our, uh, how we attach certain films in general to people and how that affects how we watch media through our lives, right? It's really sad, I think, to not watch a young Frankenstein with dad anymore, but it's also really lovely that you can sort of just put these things on and it just reminds you of a person and it reminds you of being with someone and laughing with someone. And... Frankenstein. You're putting me on. Another thing that sort of happened over the last few months, out of necessity, I think, is that I've just felt so uh, like out of the loop when it comes to everything I was doing online before, taking myself out of the zone of online sort of film discussion, uh, Twitter, all of that jazz. You sort of become aware of just how noisy that sphere is at the moment. And I've enjoyed actually taking a step back from just seeing films and discussing films and talking about films. And I've also become to become a grumpy old man for a second quite aware of just how much nonsense is being said about film at the moment and it's weird and that's made me want to kind of rethink how I talk about film online and how I make videos so going forward I'm not stopping reviewing films but I am definitely aware of how I can make those videos just feel a bit more worthwhile I, I, I am conscious of the kind of cookie cut away that film reviews are on YouTube and I've been guilty of it in the past, but I like the idea of making content that's just going to feel a bit more like actual content on the channel. I don't know if that excites you, it excites me, like doing this video, even though it's taken me months and I've been chipping away at it and essentially it's just me taking a camera out to nice places in London while it's sunny and seeing whatever the hell comes out on camera, it has still been fun and it has been nice. One inevitable side effect of shooting in a very busy city is people keep walking past and I just freeze and go into myself a little bit, which is always fun. Oh, it's just a little, yeah, it's a little camera, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have 
been seeing new releases though. Been out to the cinema a few times. Cried at Timothy Chalamet riding a worm through the desert, which is a sentence, I'll be honest, I never expected to say. Uh, I'll tell you something else traumatic that has happened. Pigeons. Um, we have just had an absolute pigeon Armageddon. It's got so bad that we've actually had a fake owl put on top of the roof. A fake owl, a whole fake owl that has its head spinning and all to hopefully, I don't know, scare them off or something. I think that's what it's supposed to do. It hasn't worked. I don't know what these pigeons have been doing, but it started and ended with just an absolute shit party, clearly. It was also really weird initially being back in London because family home for me is outside of London. Countryside, very quiet and relaxed. Uh, not a city by, by any stretch of the imagination. And that was nice. That was a good environment to have the family together and support each other. And we needed that when we were there, but then home for me is London it's the city and I wanted to be back here but as soon as you come back here I don't know it's just such a different environment that you you want to be back there right but being back in the city has been amazing it has been great and it has helped me get back to things it's where my friends are it's where a lot of my support network is so that has been helpful and we've also done what I think is a crucial part of any transitional part of your life any time when you're in a rut and that is move the entire flat around almost immediately without any thought nothing fits this sofa and cabinet should not be touching like i know this objectively and yet i still don't care because i think caring would be almost counterintuitive at this point all that matters is i get to sit in this space differently now